The Bergman and Moore model of instructional design was written in 1990 to help project managers of large-scale multimedia design projects develop a quality product. Our research includes an in-depth overview of the model, an analysis of its strengths and weaknesses, supported with examples of interactive instructional media and their possible deliverables. Because Bergman and Moore were trendsetters and capable of foreseeing technological advancements, we will show that the model is still a viable tool capable of guiding the design of today's instructional multimedia projects. The Bergman and Moore Instructional Design Model is a unique instructional model emphasizing the development of interactive multimedia products. Due to the model's specialization, key analysis components found in other instructional design models are less important here. When the Bergman and Moore model is utilized, an analysis has been conducted and a decision has already been made that resulted in the need of an interactive media product. For this reason, the Bergman and Moore model is classified under the product-based models. The stated goal of the model is to produce quality interactive multimedia products. Producing multimedia products is a very expensive task. This is why the Bergman and Moore model emphasizes the design phase to help reduce production costs and ensure quality products. Designed when laser discs were the most common form of video storage and compact discs, or CDs, were the emerging technology, the Bergman and Moore model began outside of academia by video companies designing and developing interactive technology such as ATM machines, point-of-sale devices, and simulation media. Like all instructional design models, the Bergman and Moore is made up of a series of steps. This model requires its users to produce and manage an enormous paper trail indicative of video production. Each of the six major steps begins by analyzing the documents produced by the previous step and ends with the production of new documents. The Bergman and Moore instructional design model helps production managers generate a global view of the product and manage it to a successful conclusion. The Bergman and Moore instructional design model helps production managers generate a global view of the project and manage it to a successful conclusion. Since an instructional design model will be central to guiding a project from start to finish, we strongly recommend that designers understand the advantages and disadvantages of using the Bergman and Moore instructional design model. Let's take a look at the advantages of using the Bergman and Moore design model. First of all, it's great for instructional products that are technical in nature. In fact, when Bergman and Moore wrote their book, they did so with technology and multimedia projects in mind. Two, it's ideal for corporate, business, and educational software environments. This model gives creators a chain of steps that work seamlessly together and creates all documentation of the technical work. Three, it emphasizes tryout and revision phases. Each of the six phases has an evaluation step, and any phase not considered to be at a desirable level can be repeated and evaluated again. Four, it's easy to follow step by step. This design model is divided in six main phases, analysis, design, develop, produce, author, and validate. Each phase has four steps, input, activities, deliverables, and evaluation. Five, it offers checks and balances between steps. Each step is well documented and has several checklists for creators to utilize for reviewing their work. Six, it creates a paper trail. This record of creation includes checklists, flowcharts, storyboards, graphs, and more. Seven, its documented steps are easily to replicate. With so much documentation per step, the Bergman and Moore design model allows others to reproduce the same project over and over again. The Bergman and Moore model has many different disadvantages, first of which is the fact that it's over two decades old, so applying it to modern situations can be difficult and challenging. 
Other disadvantages include the high cost of multimedia development. With this model's specific focus on AV and tech production, the constraints and requirements can sometimes make it cost prohibitive. Additionally, as it's focused on AV and tech production, it involves and requires a high degree of developmental experience. Other disadvantages include the sheer scope of the model. There are multiple people, multiple languages, multiple systems, all interfacing together. As the model's designer said, each player plays a different instrument but also speaks a different language. Another disadvantage is the design process and the steps and just the complexity involved. There are 20 different steps, 28 different steps, and it can be difficult to follow the sequence and not get bogged down in the sequence itself. Another disadvantage, as we've alluded to, is the narrow focus on AV and tech production. Because it has such a unique focus, it's limited in terms of applications. It a has a lack of versatility and it creates a problem for instructional designers looking for a one-size-fits-all design solution. Additionally, it can be easily bogged down. Because the model requires so much documentation, even documentation of documentation, occasionally it can be challenging and overwhelming for people looking to move the process forward. The last disadvantage we focused on was the fact that it was dependent on ever-changing variables. AV and tech is a ever-advancing, quickly advancing industry with different application standards and technology constantly changing. Having consistency through the developmental process can sometimes be difficult and challenging. These are the disadvantages that we identified in the Bergman and Moore model. Due to the fact that the actual Bergman and Moore model was developed in 1990, finding actual products created with the model today in 2011 is quite difficult. We were unable to find any actual examples that use the Bergman and Moore model to create an actual product. Therefore, we came up with two examples of products that do exist today where if the Bergman and Moore model were to have been used to create it, we had created the flowchart and a basic super storyboard of the welcome screen. So for example, on what we called example one, the camera wizard, um, a Bergman and Moore flowchart was developed along with the symbols that the Bergman and Moore model uses. Um, those are seen here on the screens as well, so you can take a quick look at those. The super storyboard is very, very detailed for each step within the process. Um, the actual screen that you're looking at right now is the basic super storyboard for the camera wizard that we reviewed as a possible example. Other examples of instructional design products for, that the Bergman and Moore model would typically be used for would be films and materials for rapid training of military personnel, multimedia CD-ROMs as standalone educational software, instructional manuals, materials produced for open, flexible, or distance learning, to different multiple types of tutorial videos as well as instructional learning games, commercials as well as another one that I had thought of that the Bergman and Moore model would fit well with as well. Pretty much any multimedia video product from the way it looks and appears could be used, could use the Bergman and Moore model to develop it. Also included are examples of the overall activities, for example, the roadmap of analysis activities, the roadmap of design activities, the development roadmap, as well as the production authoring roadmap, validating phase activities. Those all can be seen as well as basic overviews of examples of how the Bergman and Moore model flows and operates and runs together. Through this presentation, we hope that you now have a better understanding of the Bergman and Moore instructional design model. We have given you an overview of the model, discussed its advantages, its disadvantages, and have given you examples of how the model could be put into action for current multimedia projects. As a group, we believe that the Bergman and Moore instructional design model can be easily used for highly technical multimedia projects. This model has an overall concept of managing projects by breaking them into smaller, more manageable parts. It also focuses on documentation, creating a paper trail, managing talent, and controlling budgets. Thank you for watching this presentation. The members of our group are Shanika Carter, Eric Folks, Carrie Nicely, 
Eddie Matthews, Jessica Pettyjohn, and Marnie Sands. Please visit our project wiki at 6321bmcooperativespring2011.pbworks.com.